Act Four of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Act Four, Scene One, Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar Lawrence and Paris. On Thursday, sir. The time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death and therefore have i little talked of love for <laughs> venus smiles not in a house of tears now sir her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society now do you know the reason of this haste aside i would i knew not why it should be slowed look sir here comes the lady towards my cell enter juliet happily met my lady and my wife that may be sir when i may be a wife that may must be love on thursday next what must be shall be that's a certain text come you to make a confession to this father to answer that i should confess to you do not deny to him that you love me i will confess to you that i love him so will ye i am sure that you love me if i do so it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face poor soul thy face is much abused with tears the tears have got small victory by that for it was bad enough before their spite Thou wrong'st it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is a truth, and what I spake, I spake it to my face. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, holy father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse you. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Exit. Oh, shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me, past hope, past cure, past help. Ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it on thursday next be married to this county tell me not fire that thou hearest of this unless thou tell me how i may prevent it if in thy wisdom thou canst give no help do thou but call my resolution wise and with this knife i'll help it presently god joined my heart and romeo's thou our hands and ere this hand by thee to romeo's sealed shall be the label to another deed or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another this shall slay them both Therefore, out of thy long-experienced time, give me some present counsel, or behold, twixt my extremes and me, this bloody knife shall play the empire, arbitrating that which the commission of thy years and art could to no issue of true honour bring. Be not so long to speak, I long to die, if what thou speak'st speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent if rather than to marry county paris thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away the shame that copsed with death himself to scrape from it and if thou darest i'll give thee remedy Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of yonder tower, or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are, chain me with roaring bears, or shut me nightly in a charnel house, or covered quite with dead men's rattling bones, with reeky shanks and yellow chapless skulls, or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud, things that to hear them told have made me tremble and i will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love hold then go home be merry 
Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial. Be then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off. When presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease. No warmth, no breath, shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paly ashes. Thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. Each part, deprived of subtle government, shall, stiff and stark and cold, appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours and then awake as from a pleasant sleep now when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rise thee from thy bed there art thou dead then as the manner of our country is in thy best robes uncovered on the bier thou shalt be born to the same ancient vault where all the kindreds of the capulets lie in the meantime, against thou should awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valour in the acting it. Give me, give me, oh, tell me not of fear. Hold, get you gone. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua, with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. Exit. Scene two, Hall in Capulet's house. Enter Capulet, Lady Capulet, nurse and servants. So many guests invite as here are it. Exit first servant. Sirrah, go hire me twenty cunning cooks. You shall have none ill, sir, for I'll try if they can lick their fingers. How canst thou try them so? Marry, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers. Therefore he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me. Go, be gone. Exit second servant. We shall be much unfurnished for this time. What, is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. Well, be may chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. See where she comes from shrift with merry look. Enter Juliet. How now, my headstrong? Where have you been gadding? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests, and am enjoined by holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here, to beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you, henceforward i am ever ruled by you send for the county go tell him of this i'll have this knot knit up to-morrow morning i met the youthful lord at lawrence's cell and gave him what becomed love i might not stepping o'er the bounds of modesty why i am glad on't this is well stand up this is as it should be let me see the county i marry go i say and fetch him hither now for god this reverend holy friar all our whole city is much bound to him. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet, to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me to-morrow? No, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church to-morrow. Exit, Juliet and nurse. We shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Tush, I will stir about, and all things shall be well, I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet, help to deck up her. I'll not to bed to-night. Let me alone, I'll play the housewife for this once. What? Ho! Oh, they are all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up. Against to-morrow my heart is wondrous light, since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Exit. Scene three. Juliet's Chamber. 
Enter Juliet and Nurse. Aye, those attires are best. But, gentle nurse, I pray thee, leave me to myself to-night, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which well thou knowest is cross and full of sin. Enter Lady Capulet. What? Are you busy, ho? Huh? Need you my help? No, madam. We have called such necessaries as are behoveful for our state to-morrow. So please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Exit, Lady Capulet and Nurse. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married, then, to-morrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. Laying down her dagger. What if it be a poison, which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonoured, because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is. And yet methinks it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. I will not entertain so bad a thought. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle, where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt yet but green in earth lies festering in his shroud, whereas they say at some hours in the night spirits resort? Alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, what with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth that living mortals hearing them run mad. Or if I wake, shall I not be distraught and violent with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone as with a club dash out my desperate brains? Oh, look! Methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo, that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay! Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. Throws herself on the bed. Scene four, Hall in Capulet's house. Enter Lady Capulet and Nurse. Hold, take these keys and fetch more spices, nurse. They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Enter Capulet. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats, good Angelica. Spare not for cost. Go, you cart queen, go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick to-morrow for this night's watching. No, not a whit. What? I have watched ere now all night for lesser cause, and ne'er been sick. Ay, you have been a mouse-hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. Exit, Lady Capulet, and Nurse. A jealous hood, a jealous hood. Now, fellow. Enter servants, with spits, logs, and baskets. What's there? Things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Make haste, make haste. Exit, first servant. Sirrah, fetch drier logs. Call Peter, he will show thee where they are. I have a head, sir, that will find out logs. I never trouble Peter for the matter. Exit. Mass and well said, a merry horse Ha! Thou shalt be log ahead. Good faith. Tis day. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said he would. I hear him near. Music within. Nurse! Wife! What ho! What nurse, I say! Re-enter nurse. Go waken Juliet. Go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he is come already. Make haste, I say. Exit. Scene five. Juliet's chamber. 
Juliet on the bed. Enter nurse. Mistress? What mistress? Juliet? Fast, I warrant her, she... Why, lamb? Why, lady? Fie, you slug abed. Why, love, I say, madam, sweetheart. Why, bride? What, not a word? You take your pennyworths now, sleep for a week, for the next night, I warrant, the county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. God forgive me. Mary and amen. How sound is she asleep? I needs must wake her. Madam, madam, madam. Ay, let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up, i'faith. Will it not be? What, dressed? And in your clothes? And down again? I must needs wake you. Lady, lady, lady! Alas! Alas! Help! Help! My lady's dead! Oh, well a day that ever I was born! Some aqua vitae! Ho, oh, my lord! My lady! Enter Lady Capulet. What noise is here? O oh, lamentable day! What is the matter? Look! Look! O oh, heavy day! O oh, me! O oh, me! My child! My only life! Revive! Look up, or I will die with thee! Help! Help! Call help! Enter Capulet. For shame! Bring Juliet forth! Her lord is come! She's dead, deceased! She's dead! Alack the day! And lack the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Ha! Let me see her. Out, alas! She's cold. Her blood is settled, and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. A cursed time! Unfortunate old man! O oh, lamentable day! O oh, woeful time! Death, that hath ta'en her hence to make me wail, ties up my tongue, will not let me speak. Enter Friar Lawrence and Paris, with musicians. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. O oh, son, the night before thy wedding day! Hath death lain with thy bride? There, there she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir, my daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all. Life, living, all his deaths. Have I thought long to see this morning's face? And doth it give me such a sight as this? A cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day, most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labour of his pilgrimage. But one, poor one, one poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace in, and cruel death hath catched it from my sight. O oh, woe, O oh, woeful, woeful, woeful day! Most lamentable day, most woeful day, that ever, ever I did yet behold. O oh, day, O oh, day, O oh, day, O oh, hateful day! Never was seen so black a day as this. O oh, woeful day, O oh, woeful day! Beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain! Most detestable death! By thee beguiled, by cruel, cruel thee, quite overthrown, O love, O life, not life, but love in death. Despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed, uncomfortable time, why comest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? O child, O child, my soul and not my child, dead art thou dead? Alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. Peace, ho, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. 
heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid now heaven hath all and all the better it is for the maid your part in her you could not keep from death but heaven keeps his part in eternal life and most you sought was her promotion for twas your heaven she should be advanced and weep ye now seeing she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself oh in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she is well she's not well married that lives married long but she's best married that dies married young dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course and as the custom is in all her best array bear her to church for though fond nature bids us all lament yet nature's tears are reason's merriment all things that we ordain festival turn from their office to black funeral our instruments to melancholy bells our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change our bridal flowers serve for a buried course and all things change them to the contrary sir go you in and madam go with him and go sir paris every one prepare to follow his fair course into her grave the heavens do lower upon you for some ill move them no more by crossing their high will exit capulet lady capulet paris and friar faith we may put up our pipes and be gone honest good fellows ah put up put up for well you know this is a pitiful case exit ay by my troth the case may be amended enter peter musicians oh musicians heart's ease heart's ease oh and you will have me live play heart's ease why heart's ease oh musicians because my heart itself plays my heart is full of woe oh play me some merry dump to comfort me not a dump we tis no time to play now you will not then no i will then give it you soundly what will you give us no money on my face but the gleek i will give you the minstrel then will i give you the serving creature then will i lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate i will carry no crotches i'll ray you i'll far you do you note me and you ray us and far us you note us pray you put up your dagger and put out your wit then have at you with my wit i will dry-beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger answer me like men when griping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress then music with her silver sound why silver sound why music with her silver sound what say you simon cattling marry sir because silver hath a sweet sound pretty what say you hugh rebeck i say silver sound because musicians sound for silver pretty too what say you james soundpost faith i know not what to say oh i cry you mercy you are the singer i will say for you it is music with her silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding then music with her silver sound with speedy help doth lend redress exit what a pestilent knave is this same hang him jack come we will in here tarry for the mourners and stay dinner exit end of act four